Good morning, Mike and Corey today on October 14th as weather starts to get colder, um, but the markets aren't getting colder. They're getting hotter and we love that. So today we're going to cover some different topics. Uh, one, Elon Musk could become a trillionaire. That's that's what they say. He's not there yet. But uh, what what is a trillionaire? That's crazy um and then want to talk about the nasdaq nearing all-time highs again and what nvidia is doing there and then Corey's going to go into some 2025 projections and that there's still room to run but before we get started must remind you this is a financial education presentation you must do your own due diligence on anything that you hear in this presentation more disclaimer information can be found on anchorstarwealth.com and the opinions expressed are mine and Corey's alone so i am wearing a green shirt today and i'm going to show you some green charts so um, as far as the markets today, they are up. S&P 500 is bumping or it's already hitting high, new all-time highs, uh, up a half a percent. And the NASDAQ is nearing its, its high again, which it hit in July and then sold off a little bit. But it's getting right up there again. So how exciting is that? I can tell you one person that's very excited in this article, Elon Musk. There's an article about he is on track to become a trillionaire by 2027, a trillionaire. That's crazy. Uh, you know, I, I think any of us would be happy in the, in the millions, we're certainly happy, but in the billions, you're like, wow, that billions are lots and lots, but a trillionaire, that's crazy. He could almost like pay off the US debt. Well, maybe not quite that high. So uh, here, here is the, the gist of the article. He is worth, uh, let's see here, $265 billion right now. So he's he's one fourth of the way. You probably could buy some NFL franchises and maybe you can even get the Bengals a Super Bowl or, or the Raiders for Steve. Um, but, you know, that's a lot of money. I have no idea, no idea what you would do with that much money other than, uh, you know, fund charities, help people and probably buy all the boats and cars you ever could want. Um, but what drives Elon Musk's wealth? Tesla stock, which we just talked about last week, and there was some sell off on that with the cyber cab. Um, but but here's the gist of the article. What I thought people might enjoy is why are those wealthy individuals? Why do they have that much money? How do they get that much money? Things like that. And um, here, here it is. It's driven by assets they own as far as whether that's, you know, it most likely a company, a stock. It is something that a lot of times they founded or they were the key person as part of driving that company forward. So they, they've got to purchase it at a very low point or they owned it at a very low point uh, as far as the value. Um, whereas a lot of people, you know, you, you get the majority of your wealth through working like i work so many hours i get paid a salary from my company taxes come out of it and that's how i advance and and you certainly can become a millionaire doing that in, in saving in 401ks and getting company matches and and that's I'll, I'll just say that's where the majority of us are myself has spent most of my career in that corporate world um, but these rare individuals in an Elon Musk or a Steve Jobs or, you know, these founders, um, very unique skill set, sometimes, you know, crazy dedication, innovation, not always the, the most logical. I mean, they, they're kind of so driven on one thing that they can advance it. Um, but, uh, you know, I just wanted to kind of share that. Here's a couple stats in this article. The wealthiest 1% of Americans own nearly 50% of all U.S. stocks, while the bottom 50% own about 1% of the stocks. And maybe that surprises you. Maybe that doesn't. Hopefully you're like, oh, I, I want to be in the wealthiest 1%, and, and owning stocks is a way to get there. So with that, I'm going to talk about one of our favorite uh, companies that we've talked about and you know, is NVIDIA. And NVIDIA, great company, um, surged up to about $140 a share back in the July, June, July timeframe. A lot of people were like, oh, should I buy it? 
and we said, you know, let's wait a little bit till it comes down and we can get it on sale. And we were able to get this company about 20% off on a lot of our models when we added it. Um, and since then, it is nearing all-time highs again. I think I think it's closing all-time high is like 136, 137. So right now it's trading above that. We'll see what it holds uh, on the day. But Nvidia is a company that you know has existed over 20 years, but it really has just taken off since I'll call it the Chat GPT era when AI just really took you know, uh, what was it, November of a couple years ago. So NVIDIA has surged. I don't know if it's number one now. It's between NVIDIA, Apple, and Microsoft as the most valuable companies in the world. It's not Tesla. But um, uh, so I just thought I'd show this. And where this comes into play is the NASDAQ, which is the tech stocks. You can see on this graph, it is also nearing the all-time high. So it peaked, I want to say it was on July 10th. Yep, July 10th, it peaked at 18,600. And it, right now it's up to 18,465. So it is getting near that all-time high again. The S&P 500 is already there. And sometimes people will ask, well, wait, if it's an all-time high, you know, did I miss out? And, and, and my response is, it's going to hit a lot more all-time highs over the next 50 years. And, and that's what happens as things continue to grow. So you shouldn't go, oh my gosh, it's at an all-time high. I don't want to touch this overall. You know, we all obviously are always looking to buy things on sale, but you can't time the market. And, and I'm going to use this example as I'm going to scroll back just a little bit and I'm going to show you 2023. In 2023, at this same time frame, I'm, I'm actually just going to grab more like right around November. Um, in November, the NASDAQ hit its all-time high. And if you made the decision right now, or let's go reel it back a year, and you were like, oh, I want to get out of the market. It's at the all-time high. I'm, gonna, I'm real happy. You just missed out on another 30 or 40% gain. Now, Will it do it again this year based on 2024? We have no idea. We, we don't know. I can't predict the next 12 months. But if you made this decision a year ago and got out, how do you buy back in? You're like, oh my gosh, I've just missed out on a 30 or 40% gain. So that's why market timing does not work. We do not market time. Um, we obviously have investing theses, but, but you know, we want to be in the market. We know it will continue to go up. So anyways, that's some uh, green news today. I'm going to turn it over to Corey, and he's going to talk about next year. Yeah, Mike. So we don't know uh, what's coming over the next 12 months, but Yardini Research is uh, trying to give us some parameters to think about these next 12 months. So just a couple of charts here first. This is the S&P 500, uh, where we kind of are currently as of October 11th, at least. And the market has risen another couple percent since then. So um, we are at the high end of Yardini's 2024 range, uh, you know, expected S&P range. And where is that coming from? That That's coming from what is the market earning per share, so per share of the per share of the S&P 500. They, they do it across, across the index. Um, and we are, when we look at what they're earning per share and how much it costs, uh, what the index is trading at, you see that the market is at a full valuation multiple right now for 2024. And that valuation multiple is really consistent over time. So as we look to this green section, 2025, they would expect that that valuation multiple doesn't increase over time. Now, there is some research showing that companies over time have increased margins and that higher valuation multiples could be sustainable under higher margin type companies over time. Uh, but, you know, we're still sort of at the high end of that valuation range. That's not all going to happen next year. So with the thought that we're kind of fully valued now, um, Yardini does also predict 10% earnings growth for the index next year. So if we uh, extrapolate that out, they do see an S&P 500 around 6,300 next year under that situation, uh, under you know those circumstances. 
And even if we remain fully valued over the next year at that 21 forward price to earnings ratio, uh, we could see another, uh, according to their research, about 7.5% return next year. So that's not what we've seen in 2024, but that's a reasonable estimate according to their research based on the projected earnings for the index. Now, the economy is in a good place right now. Uh, the stock market's in a good place. It's a roaring bull market, new all-time highs all the time. There's not a lot of negativity priced in. If uh, something does occur that, that causes us to price in some negativity, they you know, and we do see the valuation multiples contract some you know then there is some room uh, to the downside under that situation we're always looking for that i know yardini is as well and uh, it's just something to keep in the back of our mind but while we're in in that bull market we want to let it ride awesome well thank you it's a it's a great monday to start out this week and um you know, if you're on holiday, enjoy. The markets are not this week, but, um, you know, going forward, we're coming into an election. We do expect some volatility. Whether you consider that positive or negative news probably depends on which candidate you like. Um, but, but, you know, going forward, expect some volatility during October. And when the market gets clarity from the election, who knows? Uh, hey, it, it, it could boom further. Yep. Mike, looking at this volatility, this volatility going back to 2008, every example. So the red here, we've got bear markets, 20% or more drops. Mm -hmm. In the blue, we've got corrections, 10%, 10 to 20% drops. Every one of the, every instance of volatility has been a buying opportunity. Yep. And it's an opportunity to join that 1% that Mike referenced earlier. That one percent of uh, people, you know, gathering assets and and quality assets at that. So, absolutely. Sorry. Oh, great! Thank you. Have a great week, everyone. We'll continue to report out this week as earnings start to come out. I, I think the biggest earnings I saw coming out this week is Netflix is coming out Thursday afternoon. There's some other, I think some airline stocks. We probably won't report on those, but we'll be looking forward to the big tech companies coming out over the next couple of weeks. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye.